Hey guys, welcome to the UF Disciple channel. Today's video is going to be featuring a direct comparison between the Gigabyte GTX 960 Windforce 2GB edition and the Galaxy GTX 960 EXOC 4GB edition. So let's get started. So with this comparison, the point is to do several things. First, to see how much an extra 2GB of VRAM affects the performance of the GTX 960, and also what the price to performance difference is going to be between these two cards. The overall performance will be evaluated at 1080p and 1440p gaming, since in the testing of either card, neither one of them can play AAA titles at decent settings at 4K. And each card will be evaluated on both its out-of-the-box speed and its overclock speed with the games Arkham Knight, Crisis 3, Far Cry 4, Middle Earth Shadow of Mortar, Tomb Raider, and The Witcher 3. If you would like to see the complete breakdown of each card and what the overclocks were on, the, on these cards, you can click the card, said card a lot, in the top right hand corner to see the playlist featuring these cards and the overall review that I did on either one of them. And as I go through the statistics, feel free to pause the video as you need to evaluate anything in detail. Let's start off with the card stock performance at 1080p. The Gigabyte 960 pulls a win in the Crisis 3 and Far Cry 4 benchmarks and a tie in Tomb Raider, while the Galax takes the performance title in every other game. The overclocking changes the story a bit, with the Gigabyte 960 being able to take in the title with The Witcher 3 and keep the tie in Tomb Raider. The Galax 960 wins the rest of the games with its overclock usurping the Gigabyte. Moving over to the 1440p benchmark, at stock speeds the Gigabyte wins only in Far Cry 4, but it should be noted that both The Witcher 3 and Far Cry 4 caused an under 30 FPS average for both cards. The overclock changes it so that the Gigabyte 960 wins Tomb Raider and Crisis 3 but loses the lead in Far Cry 4. The overclock allows the cards to average over 30 FPS in Far Cry 4, but The Witcher 3 is still insurmountable at this resolution. And again, 4K isn't being represented here because neither card managed over 30 FPS in enough games to provide a relevant comparison. So let's pause with the graphs for a moment and discuss the reality. The extra 2 gigabytes of VRAM in the Galaxy 960 EXOC seems to be pretty inconsequential with each card trading blows in most games. It appears that the clock speed matters much more than the extra 2 gigs of VRAM. And while those 2 gigs do help at 4K, the graphics core of the 960 just isn't capable of actually playing games at 4K. So it's actually more of a marketing scheme than anything for a 960. But regardless, let's move on to the price to performance comparison for each card. I'll be comparing the prices for both of these cards in South African Rand, since I'm located in South Africa, as well as the US dollar. The price of the Gigabyte 960 Windforce is 4,329 South African Rand and $219.99 in the US. The Galaxy 960 EXOC is priced at 3,499 South African Rand and $209.99 US dollars. So starting at 1080p, the Galaxy 960 is the clear price to performance winner in both the RAND and the dollar, whether it be at stock speeds or while overclocked. The only game that the Gigabyte 960 posted any competition in was Far Cry 4, where the Gigabyte wins with both the RAND and the dollar. So if you're only going to be playing Far Cry 4, the Gigabyte 960 is your best value at 1080p. Moving on to 1440p value, neither of the cards completed the value benchmark with Witcher 3 because neither card managed over 30 FPS out of the box speeds nor wall overclock. At stock speeds, the Gigabyte 960 can't play Shadow of Mordor and neither card qualifies for the Far Cry 4 benchmark as well. Regardless, the Galaxy 960 is the clear winner here in value for both stock speeds and wall overclock in both the South African Rand and the dollar. So what's the conclusion? Which card is better? Should I go with a 960 that has 2 gigabytes of VRAM or 4 gigabytes of VRAM? Well, if you're looking at pure frame rates, the Galaxy 960 EXOC is marginally better in most games, at both 1080p and 1440p, but not enough to justify that it's clearly the winner of this matchup. And the delta in the value of either is most clearly defined by the price rather than the actual performance of the card. And I think that it's pretty clear that at the end of this, the 960 that you should go with is whichever one's cheaper. The 4 gigabytes of VRAM provides little advantage over the 2 gigabytes. The 960's graphics core is the limiting factor here and not the amount of VRAM. So if you see an awesome sale on a 960 with 2 gigabytes, you're likely not missing out on that much performance. 
And with that conclusion, I'd like to thank Wootware for helping me make this video. They helped me to supply the Galaxy GTX 960 EXOC featured in this video. Wootware is South Africa's leading computer hardware retailer, providing the best prices on most products, including this 960 EXOC. Their customer service goes out of their way to make sure you have a good experience, and they're constantly expanding their product line. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to woot up your life. And that's it for my head-to-head -head matchup of the Gigabyte GTX 960 2GB WinForce Edition graphics card and the Galaxy GTX 960 4GB EXOC graphics card. Like this video if you found it helpful. Dislike it if it was more disappointing than the Afro Samurai 2 game, which just got pulled from stores because the publisher admitted that it was a terrible failure. So dislike this video if it was worse than that game. You can subscribe to stay up to date on my hardware reviews, which include a few peripheral comparison videos that I have coming up of the Corsair and G-Skill gaming peripherals. And the G-Skill peripherals are just coming to South Africa, so stay tuned for that. You can use my Amazon affiliate code down in the video description to purchase graphics cards, and that'll give my channel a financial supplement which helps me out a lot. And if you're wondering what to watch next, you can click the card in the top right hand corner to watch me compare 10 graphics cards on how they perform in Fallout 4. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.